Okay, let's try a tough one. There's the argument for evil that says God doesn't exist. It comes from Epicurus. Epicurus is in Acts. He's actually mentioned. If you go to Acts 17, this is where Paul is at Mars Hill. And in Acts 17, in class, we go through Epicureanism and Stoicism back in book one. But in here, it says uh, in verse 18, well, here, we'll go to 17. Here's Paul. It says, he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentile worshipers and in the marketplace daily with those who happened to be there. This is our unashamed program in Paradigm. You go out in the community and you start talking to people. So Paul is reasoning with them. And it says in verse 18, certain Epicurean and Stoic philosophers encountered him. And they said, what does this babbler want to say? So you can see when we feel like we're marginalized in this culture, it hadn't changed. It's been this way a long time. They look at Paul and they go, I don't, this guy's, whatever he's talking about makes no sense to us. He seems to be proclaiming a foreign God because he preached Jesus and the resurrection. So they're looking at him going, you're weird. I don't even know what you're talking about. They're Gentiles. What do you think is happening in our culture? When you use Bible verses today in the culture to share your faith, nobody reads the Bible anymore. So they think you're weird. Well, like John 3.16 says, and you go, okay, buddy, thanks. You know? But if you can't help deconstruct their lousy way of thinking, they're not going to be receptive to the gospel. And the best way to deconstruct them is to listen, not, not want to speak. So what do we want to do most of the time? Fight back, confront them. It's like, no, no, no. These are probably sweet people, a lot of them. You know, your, your average person who may confront you or question you is really questioning. Listen. And then as you're listening, get, gain the privilege to share. Right? And then... Ask questions. What do you mean by that? Where'd you get that from? Hmm, that's not in the Bible. How did where'd you, how'd you come up with that? And pretty soon, you're going to earn the right to talk. All right, so there's the question. Have you heard this before? <laughs> A million times, right? Right? Why would he allow evil? And here's the way the argument from Epicurus goes. Is God willing to prevent evil, but he's not able? Then he's not omnipotent. He's not all-powerful. Is he able, but he's not willing? Then he's just mean. He's not good. Is he both able and willing? Well, if he's able and willing, he doesn't want evil, and he's good, why is there evil? But if he's neither able or willing, why do you worship him? We, we, for some reason, shy away from this because everybody in our culture, what they want to do is put God in the corner. They are, they're going to go after God. We're sitting here hearing about people carrying guns in, and, and murdering little children in Texas and murdering them in schools, and we're instead wanting to argue with God with why he's letting this happen. Just a thought. So, actually, the challenge from Christians is <laughs> evil is what it shows God's real. <laughs> so, what's, what is evil? How would you define evil? Huh? Missing the target. So, he's saying anytime you sin... Tell a lie, that's evil. He said something very interesting. You know what we're really good at? Describing evil. The Holocaust. Um, shooting in Uvalde, Texas. We can describe it, but can you define it? What Julian just said is true because we're looking at God's definition. Anything that violates who he is, is evil. But 
Trent nailed it. Evil is the absence of good. So then you step back and say, well, what's good, right? And when you study good, it's what's good that literally is inherently good for the sake of people. What, what is good for people, usually, that's where we go. And then we look at evil and we say, when that is no longer existing, that's evil. Like if you think of darkness, how would you define darkness? Yeah, darkness isn't a thing. <laughs> Nobody can say, here's some darkness here. And yet we can have light. The minute you take light away, now you have darkness. It's the same thing. Evil is when good isn't there anymore. 